On day one, I spawned in as Vegeta. Tremble before the prince of all Saiyans. What? Only five hearts? That doesn't make sense. Isn't he supposed to be super powerful? I guess I'm gonna have to do some serious training if I want to live up to the real Vegeta's reputation. Where's an old martial master when you need him? Is that one over there? He looks like he might know some wisdom. It's me, Zozo. I'm looking for someone to train me. Are you worthy to train a Saiyan? No, I am not worthy to train a Saiyan, but I am worthy to capture one and make him fight to his doom. This is no martial arts master. He's a wicked wizard, and he's attacking me with magic. You're mine, Zozo. I've captured warriors far more capable than you. <laughs> not today, wizard. Nowhere to run. I've got to jump off this cliff to get away. Hopefully I can fly. Vegeta can fly in the show, so why not? Here goes everything. Uh-oh, I can't fly yet. Ah, I'm falling. Yeah, I guess Vegeta doesn't take fall damage. Must be the ability I start with. It'll probably upgrade to flying later. That wizard said something about capturing Saiyans. Maybe he has some of my friends, or even Goku. But Goku isn't Vegeta's friend. He's more like a rival. Every tough guy needs a good rival, and I guess for now I'll have to settle for that wizard guy. I'll rest at the bottom of this cliff until morning. On day two, I start punching trees and rocks, and get the supplies to make my wooden pickaxe. I think I'll build my base somewhere away from this cliff, since I don't want to run into the wizard again before I've gotten stronger. I'll need wide open spaces to fire my key blast, so this rocky desert will do nicely. There are some nasty coyotes here, but I'm a Saiyan. I can beat a few coyotes barehanded. Confusing me for just another helpless villager, the coyotes attacked, but I was ready. It looks like I have some buffs to my punching damage, probably from being a martial artist. That'll come in handy. Get out of here, coyotes. This is my turf. Okay, okay, we're going. You don't need to be such a jerk about it. You should have known who you were messing with. With my pickaxe, I start mining for sandstone. That will be the main material that I use when making my base. At least until I can go underground and get some more durable blocks. There are some cactus blocks here too, but I don't have any armor or weapons, so I'm just gonna leave them alone for now. If I decide later that I want green dye, then I'll be sure to start farming those cactus blocks. I end the day by building a fence around where I want the base to be, and a tiny tent to sleep in. When it's done, this will be the perfect gym to train as a Super Saiyan warrior. On day three, I travel to a nearby forest to find some more wood for my fences. If there's a river I can redirect into the desert, that'll also be a good future project. Of course, I wouldn't be Vegeta if I wasn't also looking for a fight. Saiyans get stronger the more they battle tough enemies after all. That giant tarantula should make for a worthy opponent. Spiders give me the creeps, but Vegeta isn't afraid of anything. Let's go, tarantula. I started punching and doing some damage, but I was also losing too many hearts too quickly. Oh no, he's biting me. Gotta run. Didn't think a spider would be giving me so much trouble. But is it really fair that he has six more arms than me? While I was escaping from the tarantula, I found that there was an entire monkey caught in its web. Monkeys are like distant cousins to Saiyans, so of course I have to help him. I punch away the webs and set that monkey free. Be free, monkey! Oh, I guess he has something to say. What's up, new monkey friend? Thank you for releasing me. My name is Stu, and I was chased here by an evil wizard. I'm Zozo. I've seen that wizard too. Why was he after you? He thought I was a Saiyan, so he tried to kidnap me. Well, you're safe now. Why don't you come back to my base with me? Sure, but only if you've got bananas. Stu the monkey is bananas about bananas. On days four to five, I made the fence surrounding my base bigger in order to make space to build a house for Stu. Full of bananas, obviously. Yeah, baby. Stu loves bananas. That should keep him entertained, while the real Saiyan focuses on important things, like getting so strong that I can totally send that wizard flying into space when I next see him. The problem is, a bigger base meant that I was much closer to the cactus blocks, and the cactoids were starting to become aggressive. And I don't have enough buckets of water to tame them off. Back off, you greedy cactoids! The fence can keep the little ones out, but when night comes, the local cactiron is going to transform and attack me. Those guys are no joke, and they attack at night when the sun can't make me stronger. Or is it just Goku that powers up with the sun? Either way, those creepy cactus creatures have the advantage, unless I take my arsenal up a notch. I have until night falls to craft a weapon from the materials I've mined. Nobody wants to fight a cact tyrant barehanded after all, damage buffs or not. There's plenty of stone around, so I use some stone blocks and a stick to make a stone sword and some tools. I wait until it gets dark, and then I go out and face the cact tyrant. I defeat him, using my new weapon. He drops boots of swiftness. Wow, that's unexpected! Now I can run around at high speeds with the best of them. 
Bet that evil wizard would never see this coming. Woohoo! If only I knew where I was going. On day six to eight, I'm deep in the desert gathering up sand to craft some pockets of sand. Vegeta doesn't always fight fair, so I want to be able to throw sand at my enemies. And I might need to, because here comes that evil wizard from earlier, and it looks like he's riding on a go-kart. There you are, Saiyan. This time you won't get away. You'll never capture the Prince of Saiyans. But the scary thing is, he actually might. No matter how fast I try to run with my boots of swiftness, it's like he's always catching up to me. <laughs> I told you there'd be no escape this time. That vehicle is really fast, so I have to lead him to the cactus patch where he has to drive more carefully. You think some puny cactuses will stop me, Zozo? The plural is cacti, actually, Dark Wizard. Maybe you need to go back to school. I'm evil. I don't have to get things right. I do things wrong on purpose. He throws a spell at me from long range, and now I'm taking damage. I hide behind a tall cactus, then I throw a pocket of sand at him. Yes, it looks like that threw off his steering and made him stop the go-kart. Well, I'm not going to drive when I can't see. That's just basic road safety. The effect will wear off soon, so I'm going to get out of here. Thank goodness he doesn't know about my base. On days 9 to 10, I still don't know why that wizard wants to capture me. How can I be the prince of all Saiyans when I'm afraid to fight the first guy I met in the world? Stu thinks I'm being too down on myself. Don't worry, Zozo. You're doing a lot better than I could. You saved me from that spider, and I'm sure you'll save us both from that wizard too. Well, maybe, but I think I should build a statue to get my mind off of things. Get your mind off of things like being afraid you won't defeat the dark wizard forever and all time? You're not helping me out, Stu. Sorry, sorry. Stu does believe in you, though. I think I'll build a statue of Vegeta's father, King Vegeta. That way, I can show everyone who comes to my base how powerful the Saiyan people once were. It might encourage me, too. Who knows? But this won't be just any statue. The King of Saiyans needs a huge statue made out of strong material. I better start mining stone and gathering all the materials in my base. And who knows? Maybe all this mining will help make me stronger, too. It's good exercise. I'm also going to get a source of water in the base by redirecting a nearby river. My Saiyan fists are super strong, so these blocks are like nothing to me. I also made myself a bigger place to live and constructed a house out of sandstone. And now that I have more water in the base, I can start taming the nearby cactoids with buckets of it. You nerds work for me now. On days 11 to 12, a Viking villager arrived outside my base with a story to tell. He had apparently traveled a long way seeking my base. You must be the Saiyan I've heard about. I am known as Charles, and my people are the Vikings. Days ago, I escaped from a terrible place where the dark wizard of Baraka is making all the greatest warriors in the land fight until only one remains. He continues to gather the mightiest fighters he can find and pit them against each other. Why is he doing that? Who knows? Before it was my turn to fight, I ran away as fast as I could. Now I have come to you with a warning. A Baraka will stop at nothing to capture you with a true Saiyan in his collection. He'd be able to make the battles even more violent. So that's where all the strong people are hiding? Interesting. It's strange. There was another one like you there, except he wore robes of orange. Wait, Goku is there? But he's my tough guy rival. No one gets to defeat him until I defeat him. I guess you'd better start training then. For now, I'll still avoid getting captured. But it sounds like the wizard is holding a tournament for powerful fighters. I better hope I can qualify. In the meantime, how about we get you some water, Charles? You look exhausted after all that. Thank you, Zozo. It seems you truly are the hero people say you are. On days 13 to 15, I train non-stop to make myself even stronger, because that is what a Z-Fighter does when push comes to shove. Cutting down some of the cactuses is great training for swordsmanship. I can't just rely on my fists if I want to win this thing. And I also can't let my opponent look down on the Prince of Saiyans, so I go back to that giant tarantula and challenge it to a rematch. This time, I'm armed and ready. Bring it on, you eight-legged freak! I start the fight by throwing a sand pocket, and then I run in, swinging my sword. I'm doing a lot more damage now, and my key blast is also very helpful. Not so tough now, are you, Spidey? It tries to trap me in a web, but my sword can cut straight through like it's no problem. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. This spider is toast. Whoa, I feel like my power level is rising. This is gonna be good. I've become Super Saiyan, with 15 hearts and way stronger attacks. Tremble before me. I'm the legend that all of my enemies of the Saiyans fear. I know that Vegeta can still get a lot stronger than this, but the change in appearance shows I've made some real progress towards my goal. I'm going to prove that I'm the strongest warrior in the world. Even Goku won't be able to defeat me when I'm fully leveled up. On days 16 to 19, I dig deep into the mine in search of materials. If I can get my hands on some metal, I'll be able to have better gear to match my brand new Super Saiyan form. It feels good to be a legend. The way forward is infested with skeletons, so it looks like I'll have to take them down first. Out of my way, skeletons. You're all just jealous that you don't have muscles like Vegeta. 
I guess that really struck a nerve with the leader of the Skeleton Horde. You think you can come in here and make fun of us, Zozo? We are working for the Dark Wizard, and he sent us here to capture you. Well, tell him he should have sent better. Or don't, because I'm sending you back to oblivion. The skeletons that charged me directly were easy enough to deal with, but those archers were always a pain. It's a good thing that I have Key Blast to return fire. No bones about it. You guys are done for. I take out the ones at close range and then mop up the rest. But it looks like their leader got away. He's probably going to tell the Dark Wizard that I'm a force to be reckoned with. You haven't seen the last of me, Zozo. I'll be back. Now it's time to give my armor an upgrade to full iron. While I'm at it, I'll craft an iron sword and iron pickaxe too. Iron everything. Oh, the irony. On days 20 to 22, I was surprised to see Charles the Viking return to the base. What's going on? Be careful, Zozo. Abraka somehow found out where I was, and now he's followed me here to the base. Get inside. I'll handle this. Charles went inside the base. I went to go face the Dark Wizard Abraka alone. He was waiting just outside. I'm ready for you this time, Dark Wizard. Show me what you've got. Foolish Saiyan. You are light years away from being able to defeat me. We'll see about that. I threw a sand pocket at Abraka to blind him, then followed up with a key blast shot. To my surprise, he wasn't there. He was right behind me instead. You've met the Viking, so you know why I'm here. You know about the battle to find out who's the strongest fighter in the world. I swung my iron sword at him, but he avoided it. Will you accept my challenge? Oh, so now you're giving me the choice. It's because you've grown a bit stronger, Zozo. If I fought you now, I couldn't go easy on you. Is that right? I'm not afraid. Bring it on! I threw another pocket of sand at the Dark Wizard, and this time he was blinded. I followed up with a few powerful strikes from my sword. Yeah, I really got him! That's enough. Don't make me destroy you, Saiyan. The wizard summoned an explosive block of TNT. I ran for cover as it exploded. When I looked back over, he was gone. Was he really holding back or just afraid of what the Prince of Saiyans could do? Either way, I would happily take him on again and find out. On days 23 to 26, I was finally able to start farming the cactoids and cactyrans for materials. And this is the fruit of my labor. No, not the prickly pears, even though they did drop a lot of those. Using the thorns that the cactyrant dropped, and with a little bit of crafting, I can make a thorn shooter. Looks like building a training center in the middle of the desert has its perks. This new thorn shooter will be my ranged weapon of choice. I don't know what kind of totally crazy warriors I'll be facing when, and if I take the dark wizard up on his challenge, but it'll be good to have some variety in my attack options. Stu thinks that thorn shooter is really cool. I'm impressed. Thanks, Stu. Let's go test out this weapon in the desert. Who knows? Maybe we'll even find some strong enemies to defeat. Me and Stu headed out to the desert and made a few targets out of sandstone. They'd be a perfect way to focus my shooting skills. Bam! Bam! Look at those targets go down. This thorn shooter is so powerful. Hey, can Stu try that thorn shooter? I've got a score to settle with another monkey back in the forest. Eh, maybe I should keep it for now, Stu. I feel like things are about to get even crazier. And if you'd like to find more of my videos, you should like, subscribe, and type ZOZO in the search bar. It never fails. On days 27 to 31, I start to add some of the more durable material to the statue of King Vegeta. I want to make sure his armor is absolutely perfect. For the blue parts of the armor, I've got to get my hands on some diamonds. But that's a really rare material, so it looks like it's time to go underground. Stu, hold down the fort while I'm away. You can count on Stu. It's not like I'll monkey around while you're away. I venture down into the underground, farther than I've ever gone before, until I am greeted by the bright light of orange lava. Somewhere in these lava caves, I should be able to find a vein of diamond. It looks like a couple of magma cubes don't appreciate me trespassing down here. If the cactus blocks damage me when I touch them, there's no way these things don't. The last thing I want is to touch any kind of magma in a place like this. Gotta put my thorn shooter skills to the test and take them out at a distance. Magma cubes always split into smaller magma cubes when they take hits, so I won't keep moving until they are completely gone. My key blast area attack helps with that. Just past the area where I fought the magma cubes. Wait, where are the diamonds? Huh? No diamonds down here. Well, then I guess I'm gonna need to find another way to get the blue for the King Vegeta statue's armor. Wait, I have a plan. If I mix sand, gravel, and some blue dye together, I can make blue concrete blocks. That'll do just fine for now. On days 32 to 35, I felt tired from all the farming and training I did, so I couldn't access my Super Saiyan form. I'll have to rest soon, but for now, I received another visit from my old nemesis, the skeleton that ran away from me in the mines. Still working for the Dark Wizard, I see. You're gonna get it now, Zozo. 
I brought the desert lord with me, and he doesn't take too kindly to some Saiyan wannabe building bases in his desert. Well, too bad. I am the Prince of Saiyans, and I don't take orders from the likes of you guys. Then I guess we'll have to fight you. The desert lord ran at me. I won't lie, he was big, and I felt a little intimidated. Thankfully, I didn't have to fight him with my sword. I was prepared for a battle, and my thorn shooter had full ammunition. Eat my thorns, desert lord. No way, you've got a thorn shooter. No fear. Let's mosey on out of here. Cowards! The skeleton and the desert lord ran away. Hopefully they won't be back again. It looks like some of the other mobs have returned as well. The gang of coyotes are back. Didn't I already teach you guys a lesson? We know, Zozo, you're very strong. But that's why we need your help. You coyotes need my help? Yes, our friend the tribal gremlin was taken by the dark wizard's second in command, the champion Colossus. He's holding him in his fortress until the dark wizard wants him to fight. He took some gremlin before he got to me? I guess I'm going to have to see this for myself. Your friend is as good as rescued. On days 36 to 39, I set off to go save the tribal gremlin from the champion Colossus. Those coyotes are going to owe me one. Whoa, is that the champion Colossus's base up there on that hill? I really need to start expanding my base if I want it to look like that. He had a pair of iron golems guarding the gate, and there were gargoyles on the rooftop. I don't know what I was expecting from the Dark Wizard's henchmen, but this guy must be really serious. I can't just fight my way in there. I'd be totally outnumbered. I'm going to need a solid plan if I want to get in there and save the coyote's friend. I made my way around the entire mountain, searching for any less guarded areas that I can sneak into. On the far side of the fortress is a tunnel, but I'll still need to avoid those gargoyles that are flying around on patrol. I guess I'll have to use a frontiersman's cap to engage stealth mode. Sorry raccoons, your sacrifice will not be soon forgotten. I'll need your tails to make the cap, and if I can use this to free the tribal gremlin, it'll all be worth it. But what if something even scarier is waiting for me down in the tunnel? Wait. I said earlier Vegeta isn't afraid of anything. I need to be courageous. The tribal gremlin and all the coyotes depend on me. Tomorrow, it's go time. On days 40 to 43, I'm sneaking through the fortress and avoiding detection from the mobs that the champion Colossus has been using to guard this place. I'm still not scared, obviously. But if they know I'm here, they might suspect the tribal gremlin of planning an escape and do something to hurt him. The coyotes would never let me live that one down. Using the thorn shooter, I can pick the mobs off from a distance without them ever knowing I was there. As long as I'm doing it one by one, of course. First, I take out a couple gargoyles. Then, I finish off the iron golem, guarding the entrance to the fortress's dungeon. I've gotta be careful though, because even though these guards are nothing to worry about, the champion Colossus is somewhere in this place, and he has to be almost as strong as the Dark Wizard. After a whole lot of sneaking about, I find my way to the tribal gremlin's cell. Hey, gremlin, up and at them. The coyote sent me here to rescue you. Oh, good. I was getting tired of waiting for a good fight. Let's get out of here. You say that like you could have left at any time. I've never slept in a fortress before. It was kind of cool, honestly. Well, I'm building the ultimate training gym out in the desert. If you need a better place to crash, you should stay at my base. The tribal gremlin seems sure of himself. Either way, we make tracks and find our way back to the coyotes. Thanks, Sozo. On days 44 to 49, I continue crafting more blue concrete for the statue of King Vegeta. He is going to look so regal. It'll be the centerpiece of my base when it's finally finished, but a job this big requires the help of many friends. I had Stu gather fur from the forest that I could use to line the king statue's tail. Stu can get you all the fur you need. Just don't ask whose it is. Charles, on the other hand, went to the ocean for some lapis lazuli stone. That way I had two shades of blue to work with for the armor. Blue is my favorite color. Vikings love the sea after all, and I'm no exception. While everyone else is gathering materials for the statue, the tribal gremlin and the coyotes are building a sandstone wall around the perimeter of the base. Does this look good, Zozo? Don't worry, guys. I think it looks great, no matter what anyone says. I've got a few larger rooms for training and keeping spare weapons, and I also reused some of the materials from my fences to build a pen for the tamed cactoids. Stu also came back from his last trip with something I'd never seen before. Hey, Zozo. What is it, Stu? I found a bunch of banana blocks in the forest and thought we could use them to make even more bananas. This is your wildest idea yet, Stu. But I guess having enough bananas to go around never hurt anybody. That's the spirit. Bananas to all, and to all, a banana. On days 50 to 53, the dark wizard finally reared his ugly head. And he wasn't alone. By his side were all of the henchmen I'd come to know and hate. The skeleton leader. I told you I'd be back. And now, I'm back. Again. The desert lord. He doesn't say much. And most terrifying of all, the champion Colossus. He's probably pretty upset after I managed to sneak into his fortress and save the tribal gremlin. 
I'm pretty upset that you managed to sneak into my fortress and save the tribal gremlin. Told ya. The time for your reckoning has come, Super Saiyan Zozo. I may have offered you a choice before, but now you have stolen two of my fighters away. That is unforgivable. Well, have you thought that maybe those guys didn't want to be taken prisoner? Intriguing. Now perish. I felt my power rising, and once again, I turned back into my Super Saiyan form, ready for the fight. The Dark Wizard's forces attacked the base. Everyone did their best to repel the attack, but the champion Colossus was simply unstoppable. I couldn't worry about him now, because Skeleton and Desert Lord had closed into melee range and were looking to take me down. Yeah, no match for us this time, Zozo. I drew my iron sword and took out the Desert Lord without much difficulty. The skeleton was a lot tougher, but even he couldn't withstand the power of a Super Saiyan. Speaking of Super Saiyan, I felt my power level grow once again as I buffed up to Super Saiyan Blue. I've got 30 hearts and I can fly now. How do you like me now? I was so excited that I almost didn't notice that the Dark Wizard and the Champion Colossus were retreating, and they had taken Charles with them. Charles, no! On days 54 to 57, myself and the other NPCs in the base did our best to repair the walls and training room. Nothing could repair the loss of Charles the Viking, though. We had to get our friend back. He didn't deserve to fight other warriors until the end, and he definitely didn't deserve to fight Goku before I got to. I went to the tribal gremlin, half wondering how he didn't get captured when he had already gotten taken beforehand. How can we get Charles back? It's simple. We go and save him because we want to, and we succeed because we believe we can. That doesn't sound like a real plan. The true warrior does not need plans, only the will to triumph. Okay, look, TG, I just need to know if you have any idea where this tournament of champions is being held. Fine, fine. The truest warriors know that there is a coliseum deep in the nether where only the mightiest fighters have gone. I think Braca has probably chosen that place as the location of his tournament. Nether Coliseum, got it. How do I get there? The only functioning portal to the Nether in this world was inside of the Champion Colossus's fortress. After you broke in, they most likely destroyed it so you couldn't follow them. Well, there has to be a second portal. Otherwise, how could they get back to the Nether with Charles? Think of it this way, Zozo. You could scour the entire world for that second portal, or you could be a true warrior and build one yourself. Well, I guess I do want to be a true warrior. Building another portal it is. On days 58 to 62, I finally found an underground cavern with some diamond veins. Jackpot! I know that lava caves can be dangerous, but they're perfect for finding diamonds and also the obsidian I need to make the outside of the portal. But of course, diamonds come first. I'll need a diamond pickaxe to mine those obsidian blocks, and full diamond gear wouldn't hurt either. In addition to the magma cubes from last time, there are a few other mobs deep inside the lava caves, like these fire elementals that really meant to do me harm. But now that I'm a Super Saiyan second grade, my buffs to melee attacks without a weapon are through the roof. I can punch cactuses bare hand, magma cubes bare handed, and now even the fire elementals can be defeated with just punches. After I dealt with those mobs, I got back to mining, and before too long, I had all the diamond ore that I needed to make myself a diamond pickaxe. And since I'm here, I think a newly upgraded Super Saiyan deserves some super cool diamond armor and weapons to match. That's right, I'm now decked out in full diamond armor and a diamond sword too. Next, I rerouted some of the water in my base into the lava caves, creating a field of obsidian blocks ripe for mining. I'll be ready to make that nether portal in no time. But there are a few last things I need to do before I can start my quest to finally defeat the Dark Wizard. On days 63 to 66, I take a break from building my portal to continue work on the statue of King Vegeta. Wow, it really is starting to look like him. I wonder what the real King Vegeta would say if he were to see us now. This is King Vegeta saying, Subscribe to Zozo for more cool adventures like this. For the sake of all Saiyans, you should hit the red button and then the bell. On days 67 to 70, it's about time I went to the nether and settled this. I craft a flint and steel out of materials I found in the caves. Then I gathered my obsidian blocks and arranged them into the shape of a nether portal. I used the flint and steel to light the obsidian and boom, the nether awaits. Not too far from the other side of the portal was a giant coliseum over a huge lake of lava. 
Of course, it had to be close, since Abraka was kidnapping warriors from nearby. But I never would have found it if I wasn't in the nether. I guess me and the tribal gremlin are even now, since he gave me the hint about this place. Don't worry, Charles, I'm on my way. I made my way toward the Colosseum and found that it was guarded by a pair of zombie Spartans. No doubt the undead remains of warriors that had faced their demise in the Dark Wizard's arena. But they weren't going to stop me. Thorn shooter, go! Blam, blam, blam! With a few whacks of my diamond sword, I knocked them down for good. On days 71 to 74, I stepped into the Colosseum, only to be surrounded by a cheering crowd of skeletons in the stands. The arena itself was empty, except for another fighter who was standing not so far away from me. He looked really tough, too. Are you my next opponent? I'm Zozo, and I've come to rescue my friend Charles the Viking. I don't know who that is, but I have heard of you, Zozo. Long have I dreamed of fighting a Saiyan warrior. There's no talking you out of this, huh? Of course not. I am willing to fight any worthy opponent until the end, and that goes for you too. The Aztec warrior ran towards me and attacked. He was strong, so I took some damage. I had to play this smart, so I flew into the air and shot him with a thorn shooter a couple of times. Then I landed behind him and hit him with a punch. I drew my diamond sword, and the two of us faced off. You fight as well as the legends of your people suggest, Zozo. I don't understand. Isn't Goku here? If you wanted to fight a Saiyan, why don't you fight him? There is no Goku here. I would have remembered facing another Super Saiyan before you. But Charles said there was a guy in an orange robe. I did face such an adversary, but he was no Saiyan. If he was, I probably would have been defeated, like I have been defeated now. And with that, the Aztec warrior fell. No more time for arena battles. I had to go find Charles. On days 75 to 78, I went to the barracks below the Colosseum and found Charles down there among the prisoners. Zozo, thank goodness. I knew you'd come to rescue me. Let's go home, Charles. I've done my share of fighting in this arena, and I say we don't give the Dark Wizard any more satisfaction. We ran backwards towards the arena, but as misfortune would have it, there was an ambush waiting for us. The champion Colossus stood ready to take us on. Well, take me on anyway. Did you think I was gonna have Charles fight this guy? Get behind me, Charles. It's time for Super Saiyan Blue Zozo to show the champion Colossus who the strongest fighter in the world is. Strongest fighter in the world? Well, that would be me. This isn't the first tournament that the Dark Wizard of Baraka has held. I was the winner of the last one, and he let me go in return for becoming his eternal servant. That's a sad story, but you're no match for me. I'm stronger than any warrior here. You can't beat me. We shall see. On guard, Zozo the Saiyan. The champion Colossus was definitely the strongest enemy I had fought up until this point. But there was no way I'd let him beat me. Too much was on the line. I reached for another pocket of sand, but I was out. Oh no! The champion Colossus hit me hard and sent me flying. Literally flying, because I can fly. Is that all you've got, Zozo? Leave Zozo alone, you big jerk! Charles rushed in for a surprise attack, but it was all in vain. The champion Colossus hit him once, and he was struck down on the spot. Charles! I wouldn't let Charles throw his life away for nothing. I hit the champion Colossus with my diamond sword over and over until finally he collapsed. He was defeated. Good job, Zozo. You avenged me. Charles, you're gonna be fine. I was destined for Valhalla. The moment I was captured, you are a true warrior. It's always been you. Take care of yourself, Zozo. And with that, Charles was gone. I made my way out of the arena and back towards my nether portal. On day 79 to 84, I was still in the nether when I heard the wicked laughter of the dark wizard Abraka echo behind me. <laughs> I've finally done it. What is it now? I turned and saw the Dark Wizard had grown to a massive size, and he was brimming with power. Holy moly, what happened to you? He cruelly stared down at me, like I was an ant he was about to step on. Now that all the greatest fighters in the world have perished in my arena, I, Dark Wizard Abraka, have been able to absorb their martial arts and become master of magic and might. I am now the perfect being. You're not perfect. You're not even close. You just stole the strength of a bunch of other people. You don't deserve to have their power, especially if you had to destroy them for it. It is not for you to decide what I deserve. I have become a true warrior, and that means that all I need now is the will to triumph. Compared to that, 
What do you have, Saiyan, with that meager power you've gathered? Maybe I'll never be the strongest, but at least I know who I am. I'm Zozo, a Super Saiyan, a Z fighter, and a truer warrior than you'll ever be. You'll be nothing once I've destroyed you for good. He stepped forward with the stolen power of all the fallen warriors. I knew I couldn't fight him just yet, so I turned and ran through my nether portal. As soon as I got to the other side, I used my diamond sword to break the portal, trapping the dark wizard in the netherworld. That should hold him for now. On days 85 to 89, I told the others at the base that Charles didn't make it back. They understood what it meant. He was in Valhalla and at peace. What mattered now was making sure that Abaraka paid dearly for all the warriors he had sacrificed to gain his dark power. Hey Zozo, Stu knows how bad you must feel about the rescue mission. So Stu decided to cheer you up by giving you a powerful new weapon. This will definitely help you defeat the Dark Wizard. Stu gave me a banana bazooka, which was many times more powerful than my thorn shooter. This would be my new ranged weapon. Thanks, too. Like Stu always says, bananas make everything better. Later on, I completed the statue of King Vegeta, finally adding the diamond blocks he deserved to his armor. Nice. I had a feeling that the Dark Wizard would be on his way soon, so I went to seek the advice of the tribal gremlin. TG, I need your help. The true warrior has finally arrived. What? I'm speaking about you, Zozo. You went down to that Colosseum and fought and returned. That means that you are now the strongest fighter in the world. You are the champion who must set things right. What can I do? Abraka still has so much power. You have power too. You just need to awaken it. There is a great waterfall behind the high cliffs. If you train there, you will be able to unlock your full potential. On days 90 to 94, I followed the tribal gremlin's advice and sought out the great waterfall. The cliffs were really steep, so I had to use my flying abilities to climb up them. It's a good thing I still don't take any damage when I fall. Thinking back, this was the place I started my journey almost 100 days ago. It was remarkable to think how much I'd done in all that time. I had made friends, won battles, and even traveled to a whole different dimension. It was crazy. There were many waterfalls around this area, but somehow my spirit could tell which one would actually unlock my full potential. I trained my skills with both my sword and my punches, and I could feel myself growing stronger by the day. This is it. I'm going to become the true warrior I was always meant to be. At one point, a few giant lizards attacked me and tried to interrupt my training, but I saw this as another test of my power, and I fought them all off. The banana bazooka that Stu gave me was an excellent weapon for dealing with enemies at a distance. Of course, my melee attacks worked just as well. I will be the one who defeats the Dark Wizard. Me, Zozo, I've got this. When I finally reached the last day of training, I knew that I was the most powerful that I had ever been. A magical halo appeared in my inventory when it was over, probably to show that I had achieved my potential. On days 95 to 97, I was at the base when the coyotes told me that they had found another portal to the nether, deep in an emerald cave across the desert. It must have been the same portal that the Dark Wizard used to take Charles back to the nether when the one in the fortress of the Colossus was destroyed. Without a doubt, the Dark Wizard would be using that portal to re-enter the world and wreak havoc. I wasn't about to let that happen though, and prepared to meet him there and settle our score. But first, I had to enchant my gear and put the finishing touches on my base. Using the diamonds and obsidian from the lava caves, I crafted a few enchanted books and gave my diamond armor the thorns enchantment. It would sacrifice durability, but in exchange, those who hit me would suffer damage. By now, I had enough green dye from the cactus blocks that I was able to make a green carpet across all the floors of the inside of the building. There were now enough bananas and prickly pears to feed an entire village, and with the help of the tribal gremlin, I was able to plant a lovely garden in the shadow of the King Vegeta statue. This place was now the perfect gym for martial artists and warriors everywhere to come and train, and I'd make sure that the world would be safe enough for them to do so. On day 98, I got some last minute training in with the tribal gremlin. As a fellow warrior, I respected everything he had done for me until now. I promise when I return, nobody will have to worry about the dark wizard ever again. Please cheer for me in the comments and let me know what character you want to see me play as next. Tomorrow would be the test of whether or not I was a true warrior, so I spent the rest of the day getting ready. It was almost time for the final battle. On day 99, I was in the Emerald Cave, standing in front of the Nether Portal, when the Dark Wizard finally stepped through. Zozo, this is a surprise. You ran from me last time. Never again. I'm going to stop you right here. If you don't want to fight, then go back to the Nether and leave us alone. What fun would that be? I need to be on this side of the portal, where weaklings like you live. That's where you're wrong, Abraka. I'm no weakling. 
I'm a true warrior, and I use my power to protect people. You will go no further! I fired the banana bazooka a few times to slow the dark wizard down. As he got closer, I drew my sword and attacked. You think you could beat me in that form? <laughs> Pathetic Saiyan. His attacks were pretty strong, but my thorn enchantment did damage back to him. Oh, clever trick, but it won't be enough. Maybe you're right, Dark Wizard. But then again, this isn't even my final form. I started up the halo and allowed the power of my potential to flow through me. My spirit awakened one last time and gave me the power to become Ultra Ego Vegeta. 100 hearts, full power. Here we go. I will not let you destroy this world. With my new Ultra Fist, I punch the Dark Wizard over and over. This is for Charles. The Dark Wizard tried to strike back, but in Ultra Ego mode, the more damage I take, the more damage my attacks dealt. No, all my power, it's being used against me. It's not your power, but this is mine. With one decisive blow, I punch the Dark Wizard into space dust. Sayonara. The battle was now over. On day 100, I found Stu training with the tribal gremlin in the gym to become a stronger fighter. I guess he really looks up to the Saiyans after all, and all that true warrior talk set a positive example. There's nothing wrong with having a martial arts student, but I guess I wasn't expecting I'd become the master at the end of my journey. I'll be on guard here at the base while I train Stu and anyone else who shows up, because after all, there will always be people like the Dark Wizard who misuse power. From here on out, I'm going to make sure that the power is in the hands of true warriors.